Welcome to Vegas Live with Ninon. I'm Ninon, your host. We have the most incredible, outstanding, very, very well-known gentleman, Gran Filippo. He's very, very well-known in Las Vegas. And, of course, a lot of the people we have on here are very well-known. But, Gran, you just have the most... He has the most amazing museum, house, whatever you want to call it. I call it the museum of Liberace and every... I mean, all the performers and everybody in your house or your museum or what do you call it? Well, it is the Las Vegas Showgirl Museum. Yes. But it's also my home, so... It's his home as well. It's called the Las Vegas Showgirl <laughs> Museum. Sure but he has everything there. I mean, you have like You have everything. Right. Now, how did you manage um, to, to collect the real thing? Because you have the real, the, the real costumes. Well, because when I was in L.A., a lot of the people that I worked with, other designers, Bob Mackey, um, big names, Michael Travis, who was Liberace's designer, designer yeah. they all knew that I had the ability to breathe life back into the costumes. So a lot of the costumes that needed help, they would contact me. And then along the line, when they saw I was collecting so much, because of producing shows, I produced my own shows, then they would contact me and say, you know, Michael Travis had so many of the stars' yes, wardrobes. Yes. And he would call me and say, I've got Raquel Welch's gown from Laughing. And he really does have all this. Believe <laughs> me, he has it. Now, when they used to come to you, and you're talking about reconstruct, you actually reconstructed um, many of these gowns that had sort of been left in the closet, and had, they really need a lot of work. And, and you kind of brought them back to life again. Yeah, the funny thing is, is that many of the costumes that we have, yeah. many of the Bob Mackeys, we're the largest private collector of Bob Mackeys. Many of those costumes were left out in the desert, in a gazebo, with no protection of any kind. So to restore them and bring them back to life is a ton of work. Oh, absolutely. So what made you, I mean, you started this obviously when you were quite young, and you wanted to go into designing, I guess. Well, that was an accident. I, I was always a performer and had worked with art museums originally. That was my forte. And then as a performer, I always looked at everything. But I accidentally got into costuming here in Las Vegas in 1980. Uh, there was a lead adage act called Ludovica and Bill Spinning and she needed a costume and she was trying to make a white bird costume and it was dreadful and you didn't tell her it was I, the no i did i <laughs> said i'm really sorry i you know i really think i could do better than that and she says oh you know how to sew and i said no i haven't a clue <laughs> but i but did you knew, you knew in your in your mind well, it, was, how... it was art to me yes, it wasn't yes. um you know i didn't get concerned about sewing even though i didn't know anyone that did sew but I created a costume, and she loved it. And from that, everybody thought that I was this fabulous this costume designer. designer. <laughs> and of course, I didn't have a clue. But Edith Chacon from Puerto Rico, the biggest sex symbol that they ever had, she saw the costumes that I had made mm -hmm. for Ludo when she came to Vegas. And then she hired me. And that was a, that was a whole, nother, oh yeah, a whole getting, other level. Yeah, getting a sewing machine in Spanish. Of course, I spoke no Spanish or read any. You couldn't, you couldn't sew. You had no idea what you were doing. <laughs> well, I did, learn. I did learn to sew. <laughs> that much no I did learn. <laughs> you learn how to sew. And obviously exactly. I mean, if you can tell by what you've got. But, but when you go into his museum, his home, it is most amazing, amazing things. And when you talk about these backpacks, when we talk about a backpack, I'm, he mentioned backpack and I've got backpack. I got a, this is not the backpack I'm thinking of. And the backpack, which is what they call, is, is a great big display of fans behind these ladies that were the showgirls. Right. And many people don't realize that all those backpacks are welded. So there's extra it. weight that goes on it. So the girls are very strong. Of course, some of our backpacks are not for girls. They're for guys. For guys, yes. We have one backpack. Actually, I have three of them that are 12 feet wide and eight feet tall. You can't put that on a girl when by the time you're done with all those feathers, it ends up weighing about 65 pounds. Wow. Well, you don't want to throw that on a girl. And then the girl has back. to move gracefully. Exactly. <laughs> and then you have an episode like Lucille Probably, Ball, yeah, that, <laughs> you know, falling yeah, down falling the stairs. Falling down the stairs and the yeah, herself. Definitely not what we want. But we're going back into before you started all this, you mentioned you were in the entertainment business. You were a singer? Yeah, I was a singer and dancer. In fact, that's what brought me back to Las Vegas. 
I had auditioned for Don Arden, my absolute idol. I just loved him. And I was supposed to go to the Lido in Paris. So in 1980, I moved to Las Vegas and was singing at the Cub Lounge, waiting to sign my contract to go to Paris. And of course, the famous MGM fire put oh, that right. <laughs> yes. put that to rest, and it was very heartbreaking for me. And why did why was that heartbreaking for you? Though? Because I hadn't signed my contract yet, and they had all the kids for Jubilee that were rehearsing. When the fire came, they had all these signed contracts with all these kids. They had to make the signed contracts good, so those kids got to go, and oh, I didn't. You didn't Oh, so I ended up on a fluke just going to LA and I was also a high fashion model and uh, professional dancer. I went to the biggest agent that they had in LA and got signed with Nina Blanchard. Oh, Nina Blanchard. And yes. so that ended up making me move to Los Angeles, Los Angeles yes. which is really where I sort of learned more about the craft and, and the ability to do costumes because the easiest way for me to get work right away, other than the modeling, which was never enough back in my day, uh, well, I was going to, to say, but in Los Angeles on. did not have that much modeling anyway. All the modeling was mostly in New York. Well, that's but not the, true. The, 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 you know, when you think of Nina Blanchard, she was one of the biggest, biggest. ones. She was and, the biggest, yeah. You know, Ford Agency was in well, LA. Was there. Well, exactly. There were, <laughs> there were many um, businesses. But the problem is, is that if you weren't, one of the favorites of an agency, they tied you up in contracts so that you wouldn't be able to work because you're worth a lot. Exactly. So and then that happened to you? Yes, and it was very upsetting. <laughs> but it was weird too when I went to um, L.A. in Vegas when I had auditioned for Jubilee right before I moved away. I was the shortest person on stage at six two. You're six two. Yes, and then yes. I. Then I go to L.A. and I'm like an Amazon. Everybody <laughs> else is so short so. for TV and movies. So it was very difficult, other than modeling, it was very difficult to get work in Because LA. you were too tall with the pr one down hand, one down And I did hand. many a show and you'd see the cast going along and then this <laughs> big guy and then continue on with the rest of the cast. But, but um, you, know, you know, listening to you, you've always, you've always sort of moved forward and made the most of what situation you've been in right. and, and also been very successful at it. Is, is that because you, you kind of have a, 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 a tremendous view of what can happen and what, what you can do, I, what you know you can do? I think it was absolute fear because I never had any confidence. I had a, a very bad childhood. I didn't have confidence, but I had this fear of having to go back to Iowa. That's where I was from. I don't so blame you. <laughs> I basically did anything and, and everything that I had to do in order to to not go back to Iowa. Yeah, yeah. And I was one of these people that, you know, didn't have a stick to test my way, but I would do anything. But you have a great much. personality. He has a great look and a great personality. Now we're going to go back. We've got this museum. We've got all these incredible gowns. I mean, you, it's just amazing. I can't say how many. Now, I understand you're opening up a, you are opening up a museum in North Vegas. Right. Well, right now we're in negotiations with the city. Yes. The mayor, Carolyn Goodman, had given us this incredible idea to move into the Reed Whipple. Um, there is another party that wants the same property, so it's a little competition going on. But hopefully within the next few months we'll find out whether or not whether we get it. Whether you can get in there or not. And this would be a great place to display what right. you have. Mind you, but his display at, at his museum at home is, uh, it, I mean, you walk in and it's just gowns upon gowns, and then you've got this incredible staircase and everything. What is the most, of, I can't say the most famous gown you have, because you have so many of them. What, in your mind, is the most famous gown? And well, the most famous gown, not talking about um, showgirl yes, wardrobe, yes. the most famous gown would be Anne Margaret. Anne Margaret. And that's the one that, um, when Oprah Winfrey had lost so much weight, there was a publicity shot of Anne Margaret wearing this costume, and some art director or somebody in Oprah's people, whatever, took off Anne Margaret's head 
off of the photo and then put on Oprah's. And of course, it's a Bob Mackie, it's a couture yes. gown, it's absolutely phenomenal. But because of the scandal that's attached to it and the and fact that... You ended up with it. Yeah, so... <laughs> that's amazing. Thanks to Anne Margaret and Bob Mackey. And the main reason they got rid of it is they thought it was bad karma. Bad karma to keep it... In, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, as far as the thing we're most proud of is probably the Lido Jewels. Because we're the only company in the United States that has the legal rights to own the Lido jewels, and we own the... when you talk about the jewels, you're talking about all the jewelry. All the jewelry. Because they used to wear, if you remember right, the showgirls used to wear lots and lots of jewelry, right. and bangles and boots and everything. All the jewelry that the showgirls wore, and you ha we have. have. Oh. Yes, we bought it at the Stardust Auction. It was one of the very rare times where a hotel had actually paid for the importation. Most of the old shows, if they didn't send the costumes back to the country of origin where they were made, then they had to destroy them. So that's another reason why the collection we have is so rare, because we have so many different shows from different places, Paris, from um, New York, from Reno, as well as, of course, the majority is from Las Vegas, where a lot of other people may have one collection you from one show. Yeah, we have a variety of shows and we have Broadway shows as well as the Vegas shows. Don't, don't, don't too often you know, think to your place and I saw you have a piano and you're starting to play the piano again. You used to play the piano and now you're going back to it again. Right. But when you walk through your museum and you look at all what you've achieved and what, how do you feel? I mean, you've got to have this incredible accomplishment. Well, I just feel that it's so vitally important to keep this history alive yes. and to, especially now with Jubilee closing and there's no real showgirls other than what we provide, yes. you know, and I know people will get offended by that and say, well, there's showgirls all up and down the sidewalks of the strip, but it's not no, the same about, thing. No, we're talking about the showgirls, exactly. sort of in, I guess it was the 60s, 70s and 80s, even before that. But you talk about these incredible shows. I mean, they put, used to put on, especially MGM, they had these shows. I mean, well, all right. the stardust, all of them had the showgirls. And I think the great thing is, is the day that I will be most elated yes. is the day that we open the public venue. Because yes. when that happens, um, although the Reed Whipple is 34,000 square feet, by the time we're done, it will be close to 70,000. So you're going to expand it? More we're going to expand so it. Stuff, um, we have wonderful people behind us, like Fred Domaney and Cindy Domaney. Yes. Um, we're going to build a 400-seat showroom and show people exactly so what the shows are so like. So you have a lot of the, um, the, the generation that really were in, in Vegas in the 60s and Oh, 70s. many of those you people. You have those people that are behind They work with you, us. And they're exactly. working with some of the names of them? Uh, many of the, the leads that were here, yeah. you know, um, Nikki Adamo is one of them. Mm -hmm. um, Diana Saunders was a well-known performer. Oh, that did. Hair. She was a Bob Fosse dancer. Um, we have so many yes. people. I mean, the great thing about our yeah. Facebook page is that there's almost 5,000 people and the majority of them are ex-performers or current performers. And they love to see everybody exactly. else on that. If, if I'd been a showgirl, I would love to go to your page and well, do Well, it's that. also amazing is that you would think like a place like Paris would have a showgirl museum. They but they don't. We're nobody, the only real one. showgirl museum in the world. So, so you know, Grant. that's one more feather in the cap of so Las Vegas. So don't forget, Grant, Filippo, um, how can they reach you? Facebook? Um, yeah, you can go on Facebook. We have the, right. that there. We that, also have the Las Vegas. Well, Grant Filippo is my personal page. Yes. We have Las Vegas Showgirl Museum is the regular. Okay. You know, where there are many things in the galleries that show our archives. But you can also go to LasVegasShowgirlMuseum.com and everything, you know, is pretty much available. And if you've ever got time to just go and see anybody from Vegas, out of town, in town, whatever, you know, try to get in touch with him, with Grant, and, and really go there. To see. It'll open your eyes, believe me, it was amazing. Grant, thank you so much oh, for coming thank on. You. You're amazing. Isn't he amazing? <laughs> we'll be right back. Later. Bye.